everyone, today we're gonna rank all four Mad Max movies from the worst to the best. Now before we get started, go ahead and tell me down below how do you rank the Mad Max movies? Which ones do you love? Which ones do you hate and why? I know a lot of you guys have probably only seen Fury Road, so give me your take on that movie and tell me when are you gonna check out the rest of the Mad Max movies and which one are you most excited to see? With that said, let's go ahead and dive into this. We'll kick this off by looking at how Rotten Tomatoes ranked these movies. In last place is Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome with 79%. In third place is Mad Max, the original with 90%. In second place is Mad Max Fury Road with 97%. And in first place is Mad Max 2 The Road Warrior with 98%. Now let that sink in for a moment. People don't normally think about this franchise as like a prestige franchise that critics just love, but historically speaking, they have because it's a very creative and interesting and unique franchise. So if you haven't checked out those older ones, be sure to check them out. I also put a poll over up on the community tab on my YouTube page and I asked you guys, what is the best Mad Max movie? We had nearly 8,000 responses. In last place was Thunderdome with only 4%. In third place was The Road Warrior with only 6%, and then in second place with only 9% is Mad Max, and with a dominating 81% was Fury Road. Now this wasn't exactly a scientific poll. If you look at the comments on it, a bunch of people said, I've only seen Fury Road, but it was amazing. So if you're one of those people, go check out the other movies. They're also amazing. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into it and see what I had to say about the Mad Max movies. Coming in in fourth place is Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. For me, this movie always felt a little bit off for three really obvious reasons. The first one, they made it PG-13, so it just feels like they sanded some of the hard edge off of it. There's like a abrasiveness to the other movies in the franchise that just can't be present here because it is PG-13. The second one is that there's a shift away from the focus on fast moving weird cars. Now you get that in the third act, but in the first two thirds of the movies, it doesn't have the fast car chases that you come to expect from a Mad Max movie. The third one is that there's this weird Tina Turner thing going on in the movie. First off, she's cast in the movie. Second off, she has two different pop songs featured heavily in the movie, one of them being the theme song for the movie playing over the end credits, and the other one you kick off the movie and Tina Turner music starts playing. All of it just seems very strange, as if the studio said, hey George Miller, we will let you make a third movie, we'll give you a bunch of money to do it, but you gotta make it PG-13, you gotta put a pop star in there, and you gotta let her put some songs in there so we can do some cross-marketing type, type stuff. That's what this movie felt like to me. Also, I wasn't crazy about the plot line either. I mean, right out of the gate, Max kinda loses a bunch of his stuff and goes into Barter Town. We just kinda drift around for a little while. Eventually ends up in Thunderdome, which I didn't even like the fight in Thunderdome all that much. And then he drifts off and it becomes like Peter Pan and there's children off in the wilderness <laughs> trying to get somewhere. And none of that really worked. Now, the final third act in this one, when the action kicks in, the chase happens with the train and the vehicles chasing it, it's George Miller greatness. I mean, there's just as much cool, practical stunt work going on in that as you'd expect in a Mad Max movie. Very cool stuff. But the journey to get there, I honestly don't really enjoy all that much. Coming in in third place is Mad Max. Now this movie does an amazing apocalypse that the world has collapsed and you're just watching kind of what remains. This movie still kind of has a little bit of society in place and you're watching the world crumble around you slowly in the background of the film. Most of the people are total weirdos in this film and you're watching the few remaining normal people being terrorized by the weirdos. It's also a movie exciting car chases that it ever been put on film at that point in time. And this is also Mel Gibson's star making performance here. He's only like 22, 23 years old when they made this movie. He looks so baby faced compared to now, but you just see his talent shining through. I'm a huge Mel Gibson fan. On the negative side on this one, there's a few things about it that haven't aged particularly well. Some of the editing on it is a little bit clunky in the way in which scenes kind of flow and they'll kind of slow down mid chase to kind of show a car slowly pulling out. There's also some odd storytelling it where some things are kind of repeated in a weird way. In the middle of the movie, there's a character that gets in a vehicle accident and then 
immediately afterward is in another vehicle accident. It was very strange the way the story was told. It was like, why did you do that? And just the story in general is kind of structured a little bit odd. Even the way people would describe the plot of this movie, they're not really describing the plot of the movie because they would say an, a, a thing that happens in the movie in the third act or like 75% of the way the movie is the inciting incident that drives the action of the movie. That's not true. The movie's very different from the way a lot of people remember it and perceive the plot to be. But yeah, this is a very cool movie. If you haven't seen it, this is checking out a piece of cinematic history, watching the post-apocalyptic genre sort of be this movie. Now, as I go into my top two, it was really difficult for me to pick because I think each of these movies for their time, crafted a near perfect version of what they were trying to do. So whichever movie you pick over the other, it feels to me a little bit like it comes down to what you value more in a movie. But there's a strong argument to be made for each of those being the top one or the number two one. Our runner up is Mad Max Fury Road. When they first announced that they were doing another Mad Max movie without Mel Gibson, I thought they kind of lost their mind. So many of these revival Rival films turn out mediocre, to put it kindly. And then the movie came out, and it was just such an excellent 21st century version of Mad Max that took full advantage of modern technology, stunt work, all the things you can do today while keeping all the weirdness and insanity of the original trilogy of films. This is a freaking weird movie. Pretty much everything about it is odd. From the design of everything to the characters to this weird cult thing surrounding an oasis, even our lead character is kind of losing his mind in the film and the way that's directed is a little bit jarring intentionally to show you the insanity and the madness of Max. And all of this makes for an amazing addition to this franchise in what should be an example to Hollywood of how you continue these franchises in staying true to what came before while taking full advantage of modern technology. You just look at what they were able to pull off in the stunt work in these chases and it's it's just insanity, uh, literal insanity, because you're just watching people on gigantic poles and trucks flipping over and explosions. So many things happening on screen that just kind of are truly mind blowing. And all of it looks like real stuff is happening in front of you because it's the perfect mesh. Once again, Hollywood, pay attention to this movie of practical effects and CGI done right. There's a bunch of videos you can check out on YouTube that show you just how much of this movie actually was CGI, but also highlights how much of it was actual practical effects, showing the perfect 21st century mesh of all these different ingredients. And then just from there, you move on to the characters, Tom Hardy, perfect casting to replace Mel Gibson. He very much is both a great actor, a charming actor, and an actor that has an insanity and intensity that he can bring to a role perfect casting. And then from there you have this element of having Furioso really is the lead character in this movie. It's told from the perspective of Max, but it's her story is she's leading a revolt, seeking redemption. She of course does an amazing job in the film. All in all, this is an excellent movie on so many different levels and I I had a hard time picking which one of these movies was going to be in first place. But for me, in first place, I had to go with my past, Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior. Now this is one of the first movies that was kind of on the weird side that I got really into. It came on TBS and TNT all the time when I was growing up. And so I would check this movie out and I was like, wow, this is incredible what they're doing. Now, fast paced this action is, how long this chase sequence is in this movie, and it just, it really did kind of blow my mind. And one of the things that makes the story so compelling is it's such a simple premise for a story just executed with excellence. And so as you watch the movie once again, jam-packed with these great, weird, quirky characters, and even some of the villain characters that have very few lines in it, they're just so endearing just in the way they scream, just the way they're designed, their anger towards Max, all of it's so interesting. A little kid that only makes noises but walks around with a boomerang. So many elements to it that just make it such a unique cinematic experience. And the third act in this one, the final chase in it, is one of my favorite chase scenes in any movie ever. And some of it just because you know how low budget it is as you're watching it, 
but they pulled it off and they really did this stuff. And you're seeing cars flip all over the place and being chased and you care about each life that your person you're watching that you know anyone could die at any time. And even a big part of that makes the final chase work is this sense of scarcity, this theme of scarcity running out of the movie where Mad Max has this awesome double barrel shotgun throughout the movie, but he only has a handful of shells. And sometimes his shells don't work. Little details like that in the movie to just add a tension as you go through everything. And uh, this is a movie that I absolutely love. But how about you guys? What's your take on the Mad Max movies? Tell me down below in the comment section. I know a lot of you, you've only seen Fury Road. I beg you. Go check out the other movies. And if you're a little bit skeptical, check out The Road Warrior. The Road Warrior and Fury Road are very similar movies, except one is very much a movie from the early 80s that's low budget, and one is very much a 21st century blockbuster uh, with a big budget and CGI. And, but they're two different eras, and if you're trying to get deeper into movies, check out The Road Warrior. But of course, I think you should check out all the movies in the Mad Max franchise, but the way the stories are done, you can kind of skip around a little bit with the movies. The first one's a little bit like an origin story in a prequel to the other ones, and then the three are just standalone stories. So just so you know, that's kind of how it works. Anyway, there you have it. If you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos, but the key thing is I don't want to just talk about movies. I want to talk about movies with you. So join me down in the comment section. Let's have a lively discussion. And as always, thank you for watching.